Hi, I'm JD, and what we're going to be doing today is finding the correlation coefficient, and then we're going to also find the coefficient of determination. And I'll tell you what both of those are used for when we when we do find them. So to find, I have three points, and let me give you the formula first for the correlation coefficient, and then from there we can set up our columns and do sub sub substitution, you have R equals N parentheses the summation of X times Y minus the summation of X parentheses and you're going to multiply that to the summation of Y. Underneath you have a square root underneath the, the radical you have and you're going to be multiplying so I have brackets n sample size summation of x squared close parentheses minus the summation of x parentheses squared bracket because I'm going to be multiplying this times something else it looks like I need a little bit more room summation of n sorry n not summation of n n times the summation of y squared minus the summation of y close parentheses bracket I forgot to square it squared alright so that's what you have for the formula now notice what you have, uh, you have x times y, you have just plain x's, you have x squares, and then you have y squares as well. So I'm going to form three columns, I need x, y, I also need x squared, and then I also need y squared. Now x times y, 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 7 is 28, and then 6 times 8 is 48. Now my squares for my x, 1 squared is 1, 4 squared is 16, uh, 6 squared is 36, and I square my y's. 3 squared is 9, 7 squared is 49, and 8 squared is 64. Now you need the summation of all of these, so 1 plus 4 plus 6 is 11, uh, 3 plus 7 is 10, 10 plus 8 is 18. Now sometimes what I like to do is kind of like to work backwards. So I might not, I'll just go with this route. Uh, 3 plus 28 is 31. Uh, 31 plus 48 is 79. Yeah, all right. Then I have my x squares that I need to add up. So I have 36 plus 16, that's 52. And then 52 plus 1 is 53. And I'm adding these. Uh, 9 times 48 is 58. And then 58 plus 64. The one, you know, it's 12, right? 4 plus 8 is 12. Uh, 6 plus 5 plus 1 is 12, so that's 122. Alright, so now take your formula and plug everything in. Now, what I like to do is I just like to substitute first, write that. Um, and then just plug with the numbers into my calculator. So it's three, right? Because I have three points, three subjects. Uh, summation of x times y is 79. 
I have minus summation of x, which is 11, and I have summation of y, which is 18. Square roots, don't forget your bracket, so it's 3, times the summation of x squared, which is 53, minus the summation of x squared, so it's 11 squared bracket, summation of, sorry, no summation, <laughs> it's just n, so 3 times the summation of y, which is 122, minus the summation of y squared, so that would be 18 squared. Now I take this and plug it into my calculator. Your calculator doesn't have brackets, so you just use parentheses. Open parentheses, close parentheses. All right, so here your square root is acting like a grouping symbol, so you don't have to separate uh, parentheses for the both the numerator and the denominator because the square root is acting like parentheses. All right, so just type in all at once, so you have three, or parentheses, three times 79, and yes, there is a lawnmower in the background. Uh, 11 times 18, close parentheses, divided by square root. And with some calculators, it opens up the square root using uh, parentheses. Now you would also have to use a second batch of parentheses. So I'm going to open parentheses again. So that's square root, parentheses, and then parentheses, 3 times 53 minus 11 squared, close parentheses, open parentheses, 3 times 122 minus 18 squared, 18 squared, and then this would be a parenthesis in the calculator again, and then another parenthesis to close the square root. And so I get equals 0 0.9750. Now, what does that mean? Well, with the correlation coefficient, you have a scale. In the middle, there's zero, then you have negative one, positive one. The stronger it is to either negative one or positive one, it's strong on either side. And in the center, it's weak. And it's talking about a linear relationship and you can either have a positive linear relationship or a negative linear relationship. And it deals with how the line is. So if, the, if you have all these points that go like this, that would be a positive relationship. It's similar to slope. So if you remember that the, when slope is positive, it's increasing from left to right. When the slope is negative, it's decreasing from left to right. So this would be a strong positive, sorry, strong negative linear relationship, which means it's just decreasing from left to right. And this would be a strong positive linear relationship. Since it's 0 0.976, it's right there. It's really strong. And it's a strong positive linear relationship. Now I'm going to erase all of this. So you might need to pause the video, write some of this stuff down. Now Given that you have the correlation coefficient, it's very easy to find the co uh, coefficient of determination.
So I found my R to be approximately 0 0.976. Now, to find the uh, coefficient of determination, all you have to do is you need to, all you have to do is square it. So you take that, square it, and it's approximately 0 0.953. Now, what does the coefficient of determination tell you? Well, it tells you about the total var variation. So you have, and it's usually expressed as a percentage, so it's 95.3% of total variation can be explained is explains by ah, by the regression line using the independence variable. And that's it.